Breaking news this morning on Mornings LA Light. Your fourth stimulus, monthly stimulus check gets a push. And that push ironically comes on the news of Johnson & Johnson. Shocking news about Johnson & Johnson and its dose paused by the FDA this morning and its impact on stimulus is being felt across the board. I'll analyze how the travel industry is responding to the news about Johnson & Johnson with travel down in the early morning across the board. Meantime, a flight back into FANG stocks as concerns that the economy may be stalled in its reopening plays upon the news of Johnson Johnson. What does this mean for you and your stimulus? The day also started with incredible strong news that works against stimulus. The CPI came in strong, but does that support the push or does it not? Meantime, a real surprising twist is whether Coinbase's IPO tomorrow could actually help your push for monthly stimulus checks. I'll explain what Coinbase is and how it's among the other issues hitting today, along with worries about a housing market about to crash. It's a big new, new day as Morning to LA gets into high gear and I'll have new video from the White House addressing four stimulus. I'll be going over a third stimulus and those veterans checks landing tomorrow, that EIDL grant of $10,000 landing this week, and the exciting great news about a looming executive order for $50,000 of student loan debt. This is Mornings LA. Butter and I'm here, you're here, and it's a big mornings of mornings LA as Wall Street's reacting to the news about Johnson and Johnson, and it all impacts your fourth stimulus play. And I'll analyze that detail starting right now. Good morning, how are you? It's a Tuesday morning. I hope you are wonderful and safe. We have a lot of great shows across the board today. I will be back with you at noontime and then on afternoons. I've added a new show which I think you like, which is a later afternoon show that is every day at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's before evenings LA and you've been liking that. So I'm going to join, keep that in that time slot. Uh, and guess what? Tonight I have a surprise for you. Stay with me later in this video. I'll tell you what the surprise is. Uh, don't tighten your neck too tightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mornings LA. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also like this video. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. Boy, uh, a lot of news across the board. And it started early with that CPI number. This consumer price index number came in and it was strong. And the number was not as strong as Wall Street Thought, but it was good. Remember, good economic data works against stimulus. Bad economic data supports stimulus. I told you going into today that the CPI number might be good. The PPI number last week was good as well. So what happened this morning and what is the CPI number? Let me explain what happened and what you need to know about this factor. The consumer price index number was released pre-dawn this morning, and it showed incredible growth in this economy once again. It came in at 2.5%, which is the hot since uh, March of 2020, which is the highest year-to-date growth for this indicator since August of 2018. Wow, this is the highest growth number in a year-to-date report since 2018. If this sounds familiar, it should. CPI is the sister or brother to the PPI number, which came in at Friday. And that number was the highest number we had seen in nine and a half years. The producer price index number on Friday showed incredible growth of this economy, the highest in nine and a half years. So what did one think going into the early part of today before the Johnson & Johnson news came out? Well, it showed that there's a clear indication of mounting inflation. 
here's what you need to know is that that CPI number was so strong that many people deeply are worried whether the support for stimulus will still occur if economic numbers continue to come in strong. Well, before you could even answer that question, then came the Johnson Johnson news. If you've not heard, this is what's happened this morning. The FDA has now paused the use of the Johnson Johnson COVID vaccine in the United States. Seven million doses have been administered, which is very small. I'll go over that number in a second. And of those seven million, six have now come back with results of blood clots. One person is in gravely serious conditions. They're analyzing the situation and Johnson & Johnson will not permanently be yanked. It's only a pause currently. That news of pausing the single dose or AKA workhorse of the COVID-3 vaccines in the United States caused Wall Street to react severely and quickly. And this supports, ironically, stimulus. At issue, the reopening of the US economy. If you see one of the vaccine doses pauses, paused by FDA, then the concern is, are we really reopening at the rate in which we were going to? And that was the immediate reaction at the opening of the markets today. Johnson & Johnson's impact on the travel industry immediately felt. Marriott down 1%. Hilton down 1% at the start of market trading today. Hotel industry took a slide. Then the travel industry's impact continued to be felt in the cruise industry. Johnson Johnson's impact on travel felt with Carnival down 2% at opening today. Norwegian cruises down at 2% today. And with that, you also saw the reaction, which is getting out of these reopening plays, which refers to businesses that are helped by the reopening of the economy and flight or movement back into closure stocks stocks that did well during the closure or the lockdowns of the pandemic, a flight back into the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google all up today. At opening, Apple, AAPL, was up 2%, Facebook up less than a percent, and Amazon up 1% at opening. What does this mean for you, and what is the reaction so far this morning? This means that initially the jur the jur the, the the reaction by Wall Street was reopening the country may go slower because of this Johnson Johnson news. The economy may not rebound as quickly as possible. We may have a stall in the reopening play, not a permanent stall, but a slow down of the acceleration at which we reopen, that the economy may not rebound as quickly, and that you may want to pause in getting into reopening stocks, stocks that do well when you get back to normal, and concern yourself about the worries that the reopening may not happen as quickly. This comes on the news that 20 plus states, nearly half of the United States, are showing a massive surge of COVID-19 cases right now, even though vaccination rates are growing. So you see a double whammy hitting across the board. Immediately, the reaction was no, people are overreacting to the Johnson & Johnson news by thinking that we're not reopening at all. Here's what you need to know. First, in a given day, the United States administers millions of doses of vaccines across the country. And to date, Johnson & Johnson has only administered 7 million. That's less than a single day for, for the other two big companies. Pfizer and Moderna have been the majority of all doses administered in the United States. Millions and millions of Pfizer and Moderna are per day. Johnson Johnson has only done 7 million a day. So does this impact the rollout of Pfizer and Moderna? Absolutely not. They're, they have dominated the numbers across the board. Second, it comes literally just 24 or 48 hours after I told you that there was a problem getting Johnson Johnson doses actually out of the door, out the door. There was a new report that showed that uh, that I had for you yesterday that showed that they're having problems getting uh, the Johnson Johnson doses actually even out the door. Remember that problem with the Baltimore plant? Well, the Baltimore plant has had caused 
before today's news that Johnson Johnson was only going to be able to deliver 700,000 doses compared to 5 million doses the week before, and that Johnson Johnson doses before today's news were going to be down 90%. Look at this graphic. If you, if you were with me yesterday, this is yesterday's graphic. So this was news before the Johnson Johnson. Thank you, Daryl, for becoming a Purple Hawk. Welcome to the family. So what you need to know is that for purposes of stimulus, this does support getting stimulus done. The concern is that the economy will not reopen as quickly as, as anticipated. That is the reaction. That is the reality. How slow will, how much, how much impact it will have, not a significant. Will be permanent? No. Will be temporary? Yes. But it will have an impact on the economic booming economy right now. And ultimately, it gives you the support to get stimulus out the door. So that was a strange pear and apple to start the day. The good number, economic number for the CPI, which shows we're growing very fast, highest growth number year to date in nearly 10 years. And then we get hit on the other side with a very bad news about Johnson & Johnson. So is there other news that could impact your fourth stimulus? There is. A new report out this morning f shows that this month and last month, one of the number one searched words on Google was what? When is the housing market going to crash? Yes, there's a new fear across the board that the housing market is on the cusp of breaking down. If you're with me last year and, <laughs> and heard me talk about Marco Rubio, I spoke about Marco Rubio just a few times last year. And one of the things I talked about him a lot was he once said, as, as you know, representing the state of Florida, is you never want to see the housing market collapse because if it does, the economy collapses with it. He's absolutely correct. You don't want to see softness in the housing market. But what's important for this data is not that there is or isn't softness. It's that the number one search term among these um, uh, last month was, is the housing market going to collapse? If people fear something's about to happen, is there a concern that you need more economic support? Yes. You see today a concern about reopening of the economy may not be going as quickly because of the Johnson Johnson news. You see the concern that, that the housing market may be on the cusp of breaking down. Those concerns support stimulus. And so who gets this monthly stimulus check? How would you get it? When would you get it? What are the numbers for it? Let's go over those details and let's get to them right now. And we'll get back to this really jaw-dropping uh, news floating all across the board today. Here's what you need to know is that we're talking about stimulus checks going out somewhere around July to December. Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi both say that the bill will become law somewhere around July. And that would give you six months of checks. There's two paths to get this done. The House Democrats want to do it and the Senate Democrats want to do it. Let's compare. The House Democrats want to give you checks every month for the pandemic plus one year. The Senate Democrats want a short horizon. They want it to end in December of this year. Who are the people behind this? The House Democrats are progressives, younger, uh, junior members of Congress, newer members of Congress. The senators are elder statesmen who are in the controlling interests of the Democrat Party. So they are the movers and shakers. Thank you, Angela, for the dancing pair. I really appreciate it. Uh, and then how much per month? Well, the House members want to give you $2,000 for the first month and then $1,000 every month thereafter. The senators, they don't state the amount per month, but insiders believe that the amount would be $2,000 a month or $1,400 a month. Let's just look at this number. <laughs> just stare at this for a second. Just stare at this. This is for you, for a single person. This is not for the whole family. This is not for the whole city block. This is just for you. This is your on SSI or SSDI. This is your on Social Security or railroad benefits or veterans. This is if you make less than 75000 This is if your child, this is a household of four or less. This is you. This is the single biggest payout that any individual in an individual capacity has ever seen on this channel. It's huge. It's huge. 
And what you need to know is that the push comes from the Congress. The push doesn't come, uh, the, the determination of where and when and how and if is determined by senators. Senators and House members are legislators. They legislate. The president doesn't legislate. The president makes recommendations, and then the senators and the and the, and the House members legislate. They write the they write the bills. They modify it and they put things in there. And their desire is to do this. Their belief is that the economy is not rebounding, is not rebounded, and not rebounding yet. And that's ultimately where you want the message to remain on point. You want them to believe that the economy is not fully rebounded and that you need stimulus until it is fully rebounded. And so far, that's their position. That is their position. It has their, been their position since January. It's still their position today. And in, lieu, and in light of the housing news, in light of the Johnson Johnson news, and in light of the unemployment numbers last week, it's still the news. The question is, when does it not become the news? So far, we're fine. The concern is if the bill takes too long to get to them, then it becomes an issue. And here is a strange other twist, as if we could not have another item impacting your stimulus. You're only going to hear this one for this channel today. Get ready for this twist. Is an IPO of a cryptocurrency company tomorrow going to impact your stimulus? Yes. Let's look at what's going on here. Tomorrow, an initial public offering of Coinbase will occur. Will it double in IPO price or will it signal the start of a bubble? A new report out today from Bank America, not a report, but a survey, asked its investors whether they think cryptocurrency is a actual bubble that's about to burst. What do you think? I see in the live chat, there's Didi, there's Phaedra, there's Teresa, there's Lisa, and there's Jenny. Do you think crypto is a bubble or not bubble? Drop in the comment, bubble or not bubble. There, these, anal these people who were surveyed in the new report published today, 74% said that cryptocurrency is a bubble and it's about to burst. Well, if it is a bubble and about to burst, that would signal stimulus. Can you imagine uh, my crypto position just imploded? Can I have a stimulus check? <laughs> my Bitcoin has gone to bust. Can I have a stimulus check? Uh, if it sounds, if it sounds uh, jovial, it's not. Every time you see a part of the economy go under, uh, or fear that it's going to go under, whether it's the housing market with that new search term that's dominating people wearing the housing market is going to go under, or fears that crypto is going to go under and take everyone down with it, this is a very big issue. Now, on the other side, is it not going to bubble or is it going to bubble? Jacqueline says bubble. Uh, David says bubble. Uh, Shirley says bubble. And Robert says bubble with three exclamation points. So that's why it's important to see what happens tomorrow. With an IPO, an initial public offering of a new company, a new share, will be offered tomorrow. It's called Coinbase. It's a cryptocurrency play. Analysts are anticipating going into tomorrow that the, that the offering price is one half of what it really is worth, that they think it's going to be one of the most undervalued initial public offerings since Beyond Meat of pre-pandemic. Remember Beyond Meat? You remember? You ever go to the supermarket and you're, and you're looking for hamburger and you're like... What's this thing? It's not a hamburger. What is it? Yeah, it's it's. What is this? Is it swelled all ice cream? Is it? You know, it's like scars, but it's not scars. Beyond Meat, that 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 company where it, it just tastes delicious, uh, was the big IPO winner before the pandemic. People thought this is just strange. What is this? And it absolutely went through the roof. Well, if you eat Beyond Meat or you look for bubbles, this could be really a big issue tomorrow. Among these concerns is when you see things really unable to predict, worry that things are about to implode, whether it's housing or crypto, or the belief that the pausing of the economy because of the shocking, shocking news from Johnson Johnson, all these things give the support for stimulus. Remember, economic rebounding, jobs restoring, work against stimulus. Well, Today, we're not economically rebounding if we have one of the dose, three doses being put out of production, being paused currently. We don't have jobs being restored 
if vaccination numbers are not going to be as high as we thought. So suddenly we went from being worried we have too much good economic news to now having a lot of bad potential economic news happening right across the board. Um, what's also really important to note is really that there were vaccine problems before even today with the number of doses not being able to be rolled out all, at, all last week. We've also had bad economic data as well. You know, we've seen this new unemployment claims numbers last Thursday, it was bad. Continuing unemployment claims, bad. And also small business closures numbers, bad. Uh, so suddenly we have the push and here we go. What's important to understand is two things. One, if you watched my Instagram story yesterday, it wasn't a rant, but it was really a pep talk. I have not seen people pushing of the purple power for this, for stimulus. And this is what I think is going on. I think people think it's just going to happen, or they think they can wait till June and push in June. You can't. Let me explain. The reconciliation process is not a sure thing yet. You want this item to go by reconciliation. Currently, the president is still trying the bipartisan path. You don't want a bipartisan path because bipartisan path doesn't get you stimulus checks. You want it to go by recon. So the push now is to get it to recon now. You don't want to push after he says, I made a bipartisan deal. No, because then the hopes for stimulus checks in this is kaput and I'll have to go somewhere else, like a standalone bill. You want to push now, Purple Power, over the next two weeks to ensure this goes to recon. If you don't push, I don't know what's going to happen. So you need to share these videos. Tag your elected officials. Hashtag MSC. Hashtag Purple Power. I've seen very little tweeting going on. Need to push. Second thing is that... The other issue at hand is it's a two-month horizon. It's a two-month horizon to do a reconciliation. So you are going to see the bill in the next few days. And the push to get it to recon starts now because the recon needs to be finished by July. It doesn't start in July. Ends in July. That's very important. And it's important to understand that July is when they go on recess. If you were with me last summer, you remember July to December, those are not happy camper months. I remember them. I remember that was when I created the term Temple of Doom because people just couldn't hear her name. They couldn't hear her name and it got them angry even hearing Nancy Pelosi's name mentioned in July to September because they saw them on vacation. They're like, you went on vacation, you left me alone. So that's why Temple Doom came to existence because of that vacation. You don't want this bill sitting around still as a bill in July. You want it as a law. So the push starts now, two months ahead of time. With that, uh, I have more about this coming up, and I have big news about the EIDL grant, <laughs> $10,000, so it's due loan forgiveness. Coming up in 60 seconds, I'll be back with you. Drop your comments, and I'll interact with you in just a second. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings at 8 at 9 a.m. Home LA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m.
Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Light. And the excitement continues right now on Mornings LA Light. It's a big Tuesday morning. And I love in your comments during that commercial break, they were great. Someone asked, who do we push on social media? Another person said, what's happening with student loan debt forgiveness? And another person said Johnson Johnson was only uh, six of uh, six people, which is correct. I said that at the top of the recording. Thank you for joining me on a big morning's LA. Boy, what a big day it is. If you're just joining me, here are the big updates. First, uh, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index number, came in this morning pre-dawn, and it was good. It was very strong. That does not support stimulus because good economic data doesn't support stimulus. It was not incredibly strong, but it was the best number in 10 years. So yeah, highest year-to-year -year growth in 10 years. This follows the PPI number last Friday, the producer price index number, and that was the highest number in almost 10 years, year-to-date. Incredible growth. Then we had bad data or data that would help your stimulus, data that would, would support your stimulus. That was the news that the FDA had paused the Johnson Johnson dose. Now, what's important for you to understand is not so much the news of the FDA pausing is what is at issue. It's rather the reaction from Wall Street and the and the and and economists as to the news. The re immediate reaction to Wall Street was the reopening is going to not happen as quickly. Get out of reopening stocks. Get out of Norwegian cruise lines. Get out of hotels. Get back into lockdown stocks like Amazon and Facebook. And that's what happened in the pre in the early days in the early hours of trading today. This is news that helps you for purposes of stimulus. It's paired with a new report out this morning that shows twenty uh, nearly half of the states United half of the United States are showing showing surging of COVID nineteen cases. So those all help and support those monthly stimulus checks. Also detailed so far in this video was the surprising data that showed the number one one of the number one search terms last month on line was when is the housing market going to crash and this comes as new when i this comes as news is when i ask viewers in this chat do you think that the cryptocurrency industry is about to burst as a bubble 75 percent of people surveyed by bank america overnight said yes it's about to burst what do you think if you're just joining this room and you think it's gonna if it's a bubble drop in the comments bubble if you don't think it's a bubble and you love it <laughs> then drop no bubble and I'll interact with you. Um, this is where we're starting. Also happening today, wow. The remainder of that $10,000 EI deal grant from 2020 is landing in inboxes. And I can exclusively report details about it right now. First, it's not coming chronologically to applicants. The applicants for the EI deal grant were March to May and then the month of July. It's not coming chronologically on the based upon the date in which you applied. It's SBA. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> So it's coming completely out of chronological order. They are attempting to do people still in low-income-based communities. Not that they necessarily are getting that right, but they're starting it that way. And then they're going to everyone else. Yes, watch for that email. Then other grants have gone live. There is no grant to start a new business. The EID alone is there if you have an existing business. Also going live now is a shuttered venue grant, which is not just for venues. Apply for that at sba.gov. The restaurant grant is about to go live. The PP PP grant has now gone now been extended. You get that at Fundera Cabbage online providers that are uh, the, the the who you apply with, and then we have the excitement about student loan debt forgiveness. Wow, I've been exclusively reporting as well that I believe that around this Friday you're going to hear an announcement from the President of the United States for giving student loan debts of fifty thousand or less by executive order. Why? Because this Friday is the deadline for the president's education secretary to come back with that deal memo in which he says in details whether the president has executive authority to forgive student loan debt by executive order. Elizabeth Warren has made very clear the president does have that authority and has that authority because Obama did it and because Trump did it. And that announcement is likely to come around Friday or Thursday. This would be for 
every type of student loan debt so far believed to cover both students and former students, privately held and non-privately held. Thank you, Darlene, for the massive dancing pair. Wow. Darlene is kicking it up with a big dancing pair. It has a, it has a, uh, a whatchamacallit. What do they, what do they call that thing? <laughs> Drop in the comments if you remember what the pair's musical instrument is. Uh, I always forget what that's, a castanet? Is it, no, no, castanet's like this. Um, I always forget what that musical instrument is called. If you remember what that dancing pair's musical instrument is, drop in the chat little in the in the chat. What is the reconciliation number? Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> What's important to understand is there's a lot of things happening all at the same time. You have student loan debt forgiveness, which is standalone executive order. You have business grants, which is the remainder third stimulus. You have rent, utilities, food, mortgage assistance, all available at your city, county, and state from third stimulus. If you're having a problem, reach out to the volunteers. Also hitting tomorrow for third stimulus are my veterans. You're getting your stimulus checks tomorrow, 414. 414 third stimulus checks of $1,400 are happening. And I think this is the fourth wave. So a lot of fours tomorrow. Uh, congratulations. You may not show it pending from irs.gov's tool, but it's likely to hit tomorrow. Uh, and with that, exciting news across the board from the West Coast to the East Coast. I'm loving all your chat and all your comments. Let me see some of the great questions people are asking right now. Um, if you need assistance uh, for a business, go get an EIDL loan. It has a turnaround time of 48 hours. It's at sba.gov. Um, also, the EIDL loan now has allowed for capital increases. I was the first to detail that a few weeks ago. So that is available as well. That's a great question. Um, and what about... Um, and and oh, someone said they don't think it's a. They do not think crypto is a bubble. Says DG fourteen four one five nine. Says crypto. I don't think is a bubble. So there you do. There you go. Um, here again is the data as we start the new morning. Travel is seeing its impact uh, felt on the new day trading from the Johnson Johnson News Carnival and Norwegian down two percent. Marriott and Hilton down 2%. Meantime, tomorrow we're going to see the impact of crypto on this economy. Will it support the push for more stimulus, have no impact on it, or have a negative impact? Makar Marachas. It's Marachas, says Jenny. Thank you. It's Marachas. Um, Coinbase will be double on its IPO, or will it be signaling the start of a bubble? Um, there is some questions as well about home buyers. Yes, that new report out says that the number one search term last month was, when is the housing market going to crash? And uh, someone asking about $1,700 of student loan, uh, $1,700 for the students, the college students, reach out to your financial advisor. $1,700 for, for students, uh, reach out to your financial advisor. Thank you for joining me on Big Mornings LA. It's been a great morning, and I'll be here with, through you, for, with you throughout the day. There's noontime, there's afternoons, there's evenings, and oh yeah, that's surprised. Tonight, uh, after evening's L8 at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I am bringing back Javita Late. Javita Late is back in the mix again. You loved her last night, and she is back once again with a doubleheader tonight of Javita Late. It's part of our fun Laugh a Minute Evenings broadcast lineup that falls after evening's L8. So join Javita Late at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight for a doubleheader. You go into the first video. After the video is done, you're teleported into the next video automatically. If you have not liked this video, make sure you like the video. Take, I'm going to take your hand and just have you like this video. Yesterday, we had some videos uh, that were taped, and you were doing a wonderful job on the likes. But the live videos, it was a travesty. <laughs> it was a 
travesty. It was 3,000 people in a live broadcast and 22 likes. So hit that like button on the way out. Also subscribe. If you have not subscribed, if you've not become a uh, subscribe, please do. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. The link is at the top of the chat and also in the pinned comment. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more.